What's going on summoners? Welcome back to another ProGads video. I'm Kangas and in this video I'm talking about five sleeper OP picks and builds that you should be abusing for some free LP. You probably already know the popular OP picks and builds since they're all over social media, even our own YouTube channel, but in this video we'll be looking at some of the lesser known builds that haven't fully caught on yet. So hit that sub button and let's get into it. First thing we got to talk about today is the newly buffed Morgana jungle as an answer to tanks. Traditionally, when the tank meta rolls around, the go-to answer is Trundle. His ability to seal the resistances and HP for himself make him a pretty direct counter, but he's not always the most exciting thing to play. He also can't actually prevent most tanks from engaging fights. His ult just lets your team kill them faster once they do go in. On top of that, his kit is simple and effective, but many players find it boring. Doesn't really have many mechanics to interact with other than the occasional well-timed pillar to interrupt a jump. Other than that, you just kind of whack people with your club. So if that's old and busted, Morgana is the new hotness. She is a much more carry-oriented mage pick in the jungle, with the potential to do huge damage while maintaining the utility of her black shield to keep herself and another carry safe from a tank's engage. The thing about Morgana jungle is that it's not exactly new. It's been somewhat of an off-meta but not unheard of pick for years, in the same way the brand has. It's always had the potential to be good, but it's not something you can just blind pick and get away with. Her clear speed is pretty fast and healthy, but when it comes time to gank, the slow traveling Q can be pretty hard to hit on opponents, especially if they have any type of mobility. Ganks at level 6 are easier to execute but still reliant on opponents being pretty overextended. So with pretty low pressure in the early game as a jungler, you won't really have a great time against other more aggressive champs that can hard win the game through their laners. And that's why we have her specifically as a counter to tanks. Think about what makes tanks such consistent picks in the jungle. Most of the time, they're farm heavy champs who tend to steer away from early game skirmishing. But once they get past the early game, they have strong engage to force fights, making them much better team fighters than the more aggressive early game picks like Lee Sin and Elise. Morgana's power farming playstyle matches the tank picks, and once it comes time to group around objectives, you can completely stop what they want to do. When a champ like Nunu or Ramus gets ready to roll in and start a fight, well, your snare can just stop them in their tracks. And if you miss your Q, or it's a champion like Sejuani or Zac, who can engage despite you landing it, your black shield prevents their target from being CC'd. And you aren't here just to prevent the tanks from being useful. Since their team will likely rush in and follow up on the attempted engage, you have the potential to flash in and land a huge ult on the entire enemy team. Alright, so now that I sold you on the pick, here's the build. For items, you'll start off with Hailblade, and then build into Leandri's, Sork Shoes, and Zonia's. After that, you want Demonic Embrace, Void Staff, and Rabbit on Steth Cap. Pretty much every item is crucial to your ability to go in and teamfight. But if you wanted max damage, you could technically swap out Zonia's for Horizon Focus to give you some pretty OP one-shot capabilities. Just know that not having that stasis means you're prone to being blown up if you go into the fight with your ult. For runes, you'll run Dark Harvest, Cheap Shot, Eyeball Collector, Relentless Hunter, Transcendence, and Water Walking, with the stat rune being Double Adaptive Force and Armor. Now, I did say that Morgana was specifically a counter pick, and while her win rate has increased, I still think that she's best into tanks rather than some of the more aggressive early game junglers that can kind of invade her and actually get up in her face. But I will be honest and say that that win rate is kind of insane, so who knows, maybe she is just insane. I'm just worried when champs get buffed and then overhyped. So that brings us to today's question of the day. What super meta pick do you think is actually overhyped? Let me know in the comments down below. Alright, so our second sleeper pick is Talia Mid. Despite being hard nerfed as a mid laner ages ago, a very tiny minority of players haven't given up on Talia as a laner, and it's actually still pretty successful. When you're playing her mid, your main goal with Talia is to shove in waves and look to roam. Even with those aforementioned nerfs to her wave clear, she actually gets priority over almost all other mid laners pretty easily just by spamming her Q. Once you get chapter and mana is no longer an issue, you can start using your full combo for instant mid lane priority to help your jungler or look to roam on the super extended side lane. It's important to note that your passive movement speed helps you get to other lanes quicker, but Talia roams aren't as easy to execute as somebody like Asol or TF, with their super easy to land CC. Since you need to hit your relatively hard to land W to pull off your combo, you'll want to gank for lanes that have CC themselves when at all possible. Let your allies set you up for success. As the game goes on, you'll continue this playstyle, clearing waves and roaming to get kills elsewhere over straight up fighting 5v5s when you can. If you're forced to group before you can make a pick, try to use your ult to split up the enemy team. So, now that you know some of the playstyles, let's look at the builds. For items, you'll want to start off with Doran's Ring, and then build into a Lost Chapter and Sork Shoes. Then you'll upgrade Chapter into Luden's Tempest, and after that, go for Cosmic Drive, Rabadon's Death Cap, Void Staff, and Zonia's Hourglass. If you need the Zonia's early, you can also pick it up right after your Mythic, and if you don't need it at all, you can opt for a Morellanomicon for Grievous Wounds, or even a Horizon Focus for some fat one-shots with your combo. For runes, you'll run Dark Harvest, Cheap Shot, Eyeball Collector, Ravenous Hunter, Presence of Mind, and Coupe de Gras, with the stat runes being Ability Haste, Adaptive Force, and either Armor or Magic Resist. 
A mid lane Talia takes a lot more than just mechanics to make work. You have to know when to shove, when to roam, where to roam, and when it's just better to take a reset. Since she's pretty reliant on snowballing off the early game to win games, making the wrong choices means that you'll end up kinda worthless. And you would have been better off playing any other standard mid laner and just farming up. But don't let the lack of decision making skill keep you from abusing a pick like this. You can always chat with a coach at ProGuides.com to go over what roam timers are and when windows of opportunity are that you can really capitalize on a pick like Talia. All right, up next we have Skarner. Skarner is already a pretty rare pick, albeit a pretty high win rate one in his main role as a jungler, but we encourage him to be played in that role often enough in our other videos, such as our Champs to Main series. So today we're talking about an even more slept on role as a top laner. As a top laner, Skarner isn't particularly oppressive. He doesn't have overtune damage or something that makes him a crazy duelist early. In fact, you aren't really playing him to win the lane at all on your own, aside from getting an opportunistic ult onto your opponent into your turret if you get the chance. For most of the early game, you'll be looking to totally neutralize the lane, simply picking up farm and scaling up. If your opponent is an aggressive champ that tries to get in your face for trades, just hit him with an EQ auto, proccing your stun and phase rush so that you can zip away to safety. Your main goal in lane is to reach level 6, and every time your ult is up from then on, call your jungler to the lane for a free kill. You will literally be spoon feeding your jungler this way, who can then use the gold to snowball and carry the rest of the map. After you get past the early parts of the lane, namely once you max out E, which you do first by the way, and pick up some ability haste, you can then start to trade a bit more actively. Once you're out of laning phase, you'll pretty much function just like a Skarner in the jungle. Anytime your chem tank and ult are up, you should be looking to make an easy pick for your team that you can then convert into objectives. Now for the build. For items, you'll start off with Doran's Ring, rush Lucidity Boots, and then start working towards your turbo chem tank. Once that's done, go for Dead Man's Plate, Spear Visage, Thorn Mail, and Stone Plate. For runes, you'll want to run Phase Rush, Nimbus Cloak, Celerity, Water Walking, Magic Footwear, and Biscuit Delivery, with the stat runes being Ability Haste, Armor or Magic Resist, and HP. Something that isn't entirely new, but is still largely slept on, is the concept of playing mages as bot lane carries. One of the biggest complaints AD carries have is just how reliant they are on their teammates to get anything done. Supports generally dictate the pace of the lane, and in teamfights, even the most mobile AD carries don't have the survivability that most other champs do. The only way the AD carries can beat out threats like that are being so fed that you kill them before they have the chance to reach you. Well, when you play a mage bot lane, you kinda bypass those weaknesses. Once you have lost chapter, you have the mana sustain to constantly shove in waves on your own so you can control the lane as you wish. Mages also generally scale with the levels and aren't as heavily item reliant as marksmen, so by the time you reach your mythic and sword shoes, you have plenty of potential to carry fights. Whitey carries generally need two or even three items to main carry on a team in 5v5s. And in fights, mages generally have a lot more self-sufficiency. Viger has his cage, diving Heimerdinger means fighting him in his turrets, where being hit by his grenade means almost getting entirely obliterated, Swain is a super tanky drain tank who can outlast most tanks in fights when he has his ult up, Cassiope has her W and ult, which halts divers in their tracks. Oh, and on top of their kits, mages can also itemize Zonias or Banshees for added defense. All this isn't to say that mages are better than marksmen as carries. Marksmen still are the best DPS in the game, making them better for bringing down tanky frontliners and objectives. But if you want a more independent pick that doesn't need to be coddled by your team to carry games, mages are a good alternative. And finishing off our list, we have Kogma mid lane. In the middle of last season, Kogma got some pretty big buffs that saw him rise in popularity as a mid laner. For one reason or another, he fell off in terms of pick rates, but he's still a pretty OP pick if you prefer scaling up and playing artillery style over direct combat. Even from very early in the game, his E gives super solid pushing power with its huge range also letting you poke down your opponents in the process. On top of that, it also leaves the enemy slowed so they can't really retaliate against you. Once you get a few points in E and you get your ult, you can instantly shove waves in, meaning you're always able to get mid priority for your jungler or just take resets anytime you want. As far as trading goes, despite being a mostly scaling pick, Dogma has some pretty good damage early game. If you're in a low threat matchup, you can look to trade often using your E to poke and slow the target, and then activating your W to auto them a few times. Once you get ult, you can bully your opponent even harder, constantly going for poke from across the lane as they try to farm after you shove the wave into their turret. Just be sure that you don't spam it too much because the ramping cost on your ult can leave you running oom quickly. Like with any artillery mage, you'll want to poke down your opponents from range well before a fight breaks out, since you lack the burst damage and utility that most other mages have. Have. Vision control will play a big part in your success, so make sure you work with your teammates to get down your own wards while denying the opposing teams. AP Kogma has a terrifying level 16 power spike like Kassadin, but instead of getting infinite blinks, Kogma's ult gives you ability to poke from 1800 units away on just a 1 second cooldown. That means your opponents are non-stop having to dodge your poke from a full screen away. That's hard enough to do just
just when you're sieging them under tower, but it's nearly impossible for them to dodge every ult in a chaotic teamfight, where you can fire away well out of harm's reach. So how should you be building Kog'Maw? Well, for items, you'll actually want to start with Doran's Ring, not Tier. It's pretty common for champs that end up building Tier to start the item, but you actually want the laning strength of D-Ring more. You'll then buy Tier on your first recall and build into Lost Chapter afterwards. Upgrading Chapter to Luden's Tempest, then pick up Sork Shoes and upgrade your Tier into Archangel's Staff. With that done, build into Horizon Focus, then Void Staff, and then Rabidon's Death Cap. For runes, you'll run Arcane Comet, Mana Flow Band, Transcendence, Gathering Storm, Presence of Mind, and Coupe de Gras, with the stat runes being Ability Haste, Adaptive Force, and Armor or Magic Resist. And that wraps things up for our Sleeper OP builds that you've been missing out on for patch 11.8. Hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, be sure to sub so that you never miss out on our meta guides, and you're always in the loop of what the best picks are. Remember to let us know what meta pick you think is a little overhyped in the comments down below. Oh, and also before we go, if you're still here, you're one of the real ones, so I gotta let you know that we're running a 20% off sale on ProGet subscriptions over at our website. So if you've ever considered subscribing before, well, now's as good a time as any. That's it for the video, everyone, so as always, best of luck on the Rift. Stay hydrated, and I'll see you next time.